And we're back, and I almost forgot to record this because I've been playing Smash. The days since then have passed so quickly that time seems to slip through fingers like my fingers like water. Every time I've tried to talk with Shizune, she's been out running out errands, or with Misha, I feel as if she's avoiding me. I'm not surprised, of course it bothers me, but I think the way she's acting seems pretty natural. Then again, it's not like I've been through this before. Whenever I can't find Shizune, I end up running into Misha, and when I do ask her to help me with my signing... However, she always ends up squirming out of it. We're leaving after today, so I'm determined not to let her escape this time. Once we head back to school, we'd probably, uh, we're probably going to have to start grinding through more student council affairs in preparation for school restarting. I want to brush up on my signing as much as possible by then, even if it's a day's worth. Uh, come on, it's pretty much just having a couple sign language conversations. You do that all the time. Actually, you're doing it right now. <laughs> really, he chen That's funny. Isha temporarily stops her unconscious signing in order to wave her hands in front of her face in denial, but then quickly resumes gesturing every, everything to both us and saying to no one in particular. Hee-chan, you're so persistent. Suddenly being interested in sign language again could it be that Hee-chan wants to make a career out of it? That's not fair. That was my idea first. You should be careful, Hee-chan. Times change too quickly. By the time I decided I wanted to be a sign language interpreter, they had all they had cell phones that people could type out the whole par whole paragraphs on. Amazing. Not very good for me, though. As if she knows that another deferral isn't going to cut it. This time, Misha changes her tune pretty quickly to a more apologetic one. I'm sorry, he chan I'm just so tired, especially today. Uh, especially lately, even though uh, being with Shi-chan is fun, she has way more energy than me. D she has way more energy than you. Okay, yeah, sure. Teaching on top of what would be... <clears throat> oh, on the... Uh, top. <clears throat> Teaching on top of that would be too tiring. I don't have that much stamina. Sorry. She doesn't seem very tired, shouting the statement with her usual cheer and vigor. I know it's wrong of me to keep pestering her like this, though. Actually, she chan and I were planning to go shopping later. It's our last chance to pick up some souvenirs. Uh, souvenirs, huh? I almost forgot that I was on vacation. I understand what you're saying. Teaching doesn't seem so easy. Hideaki asked me to teach him how to sign. I was unbelievably lost the whole time. Well, I wonder how it'll work out for you when you become a sign language teacher. You can't get t uh, tired too easily doing that. Yeah, right, right. I hope not. Hee-chan, now I'm kind of worried, but souvenirs, so, some other time, Hee-chan. <laughs> Do you want us to get you something, too? Just because I understand doesn't mean I don't want her to teach me. I suppose I can't press her any further now, though. Even even I'm bothered by how selfish it would seem to do, so I give up. Eh, no, don't give me anything. I'm serious. Don't surprise me with a funny shirt or something, okay? Hee-hee-hee-hee. <laughs> uh, I don't like the sound of that. Slipping on her shoes, she yells goodbye with the to the otherwise empty house and opens the door to leave, letting a cool breath of fresh air into the hallway. A tuft of dark hair peeking from the doorframe tells me she's an A's waiting for her outside. Good morning. Misha translates for me from beyond the doorway and she's an A turns around to give me a small wave. Even though it's different from her usual offhand greetings in the smallest ways, there is unmistakable hesitation there. It leaves me with a vaguely empty and distant feeling. Hee-chan, you're up early. Am I interrupting a conversation? I was trying to get Misha to teach me how to talk to you, but I guess I was being impatient. It can, it can wait. You two are planning on going shopping today anyway. Why don't you go with them? I mean, like, why would you ask... Like, why did Misha even ask to, if Hizal wanted a... I almost called him Hee-chan again. If Hizal wanted a souvenir, he's there. He can go get one himself with you. Having Misha there, I forgot to, forgot to sign my words as I say them. Unfortunately, since she's they moved to fill the doorway, Misha is behind her. This brief misalignment in our position means that what I'm saying is totally lost on her. I don't understand you at all. And there are things I want to say that I can't put in a way she would understand, and there are entire conversations that she could have that would go right over my head. I want to tell her now that it won't be that way for much longer. Instead, I'd just say never mind and tell him to have a good time, then wave him off. Seems like everyone else is out for the day, so I sit on the biggest and most comfortable-looking chair in the living room with a book. Not a sign language book, but one of the novels I checked out of the library my first week. That was so long ago, I really should start chipping at that pile of books I borrowed, or at least return them. Oh, great. Ah, sixteen pages in, Jigoro walks into the room, a stack of papers in one hand, and his sword twirling idly like a baton in the other, casually shaking water from a recent shower from his hair. Upon being seen doing something so ungentlemanly, he freezes like a deer in the headlights and slowly moves on to smoldering with powerful but baseless fury as he sits down on the couch a few feet away. This is only the third time I've met him and I'm already starting to feel nauseous on, on reaction. I guess this is a way, uh, in a way this could be considered a kind of charisma. I haven't even said anything he already seems less than pleased. It's likely a bad idea to provoke him and just talking to him may count as provoking him. However, I can't stop thinking of the alternative situations that could play out. 
Let's say I don't open my mouth at all and walk away, me maybe to go read in my room or outside. I would definitely go down as an unforgivable insult. He would probably tell me to hold to hold it and destroy me. <clears throat> Either way, not too polite on my part. Uh, what are you reading? Not the draft of my autobiography. It is a kind of story it is a story of a man who wakes up to find an uninvited guest in his living room, sitting in his chair and reading shallow literary literary dreck. Oh, I barely started reading the book. I don't even have an opinion on it yet. I can already see how this conversation is going to play out, so I might as well try to steer it in a different direction. Yeah, where's Hideaki? You even ask questions rudely, disgraceful. That aside, why would you even ask me such a stupid question? How would I know? Am I, am I my son's keeper? Well, you are his dad, and it seems like he does live here, so... But I guess I can't just say that, tempting as it is. I give up. I already tried to make small talk with him and failed. It's like trying to talk to a brick wall that also hates you. That is my cue to leave and sift through my wall to see if I have enough money to go to a movie. As I'm about to stand, I have second thoughts. I'm too tired to go through through trying to smooth over my problematic situations by trying to continuously walk away from them. Isn't this the morning? Because, like, uh, she trying to... Fuck. She, Chan, she's an A said, like, you're up early, so, like, isn't this the morning? Then why... Why would he be going... Like, do they even play movies in the morning? I've never seen a movie playing any time, like, before 7 o'clock in the evening. It's hypocritical of me to get upset at Misha for trying to defer things when I uh, even run for my own girlfriend. When Jigoro attempts to stop me, I'm almost glad, even though I no longer have any intention to leave. Wait. He says it with plenty of authority, but nothing else, as if it's just a particularly commanding afterthought, or only a very powerful and arrogant person can tell someone to hold on to such a manner. I'm sort of impressed. You're in the student council of Shizune, aren't you? What is your job there? I don't think there are specific roles other than the president. Shizune is always trying to round people up to uh, help us out here and there. Usually we, we might get, like, one person to pitch in, but otherwise the three of us do whatever needs to be done. It's crossed my mind a couple times around when I first met her that Shizune's disquietingly analytic stare might be because of her deafness, but it turns out it's a trait shared by everyone everyone else in their family. And is that okay with you? Why wouldn't it be? You, Shizune, and that pink-haired girl, is that really your entire, entire student council? With a student council that small, they wouldn't even bother to hold elections. I'm going to take a guess and say you didn't join the student council. Shizune drafted you into it. You said you do not know exactly what your title is. That makes sense. I suppose if you weren't even elected, you couldn't be expected to know. After all, if you're not elected, you aren't really anything. No one is going to respect a student council like that. An unelected body of three people trying to scrounge up the equivalent of temp workers. Must be a sorry school of three kids having a tea party can handle every issue. <sighs> What's how small it is have to do with anything? If the student council gets things done, isn't that enough? It's not just a game, either. Maybe you should actually come to the school one day. If you get there on the right days, you might even be able to see what Shizune is able to accomplish. Do you think that I have so much free time that I can afford to waltz over to your boondocks and watch my daughter's f feats of self-aggrandizement? I have never been more disgusted in my life. What you're saying is they might as well not have a student council, but the fact remains that there is one, and she's got elected to it. And for her, it isn't a meaningless position. In fact, she works very hard for it. You sound like someone who vo voted for her. Nope, wasn't there for that. <laughs> you didn't even vote for her. Well, besides that, why don't you ask Hideaki about this? Shizune has wanted to be a high school student a council president since middle school. She would have she would have him read her all the practice speeches, wasting his time for what reason? This whole time he hasn't even looked up from his th thumbing through his manuscript. It's getting increasingly frustrating. Because it isn't a game. We don't run this school. It's not like we're there. Uh, but it's not like we're just playing at it and not taking it seriously. I wonder if it is so wrong to not be a purist. I've been to your school, really. The students there. I can already think of about a million things he might say, and I'm preparing for my heart to sink on hearing any of them. It's funny, they are probably things I thought of before. They don't even have cleaning duty. That was not what I was expecting at all. He's also wrong. They do, I should know. I get to skip out on this since I'm in the student council. The concept of being wrong confuses Jigoro. <laughs> I should take this opportunity to go on the attack. It's really odd that I am thinking this way about a simple conversation. It sounds like the last time you were there was really some time ago. If you can leisurely write some memoirs, you can talk to Shizune now and then. Don't you think that she has stuff she's proud of? That's how young people are. We have things to be proud of. If you're writing an autobiography, you should get that. Such an opportunity, and I blew it. I don't know how, how was I, was, I was expecting him to react, maybe introspectively, but... Jigoro only grows angry by the second, yet as he does, he also seems calmer in a way, more sure of himself and in control. 
Who do you think you are to assume that my life is so easy? You haven't even read my autobiography. Yet you are able to tell me how I should handle all my affairs, including dealing with my own daughter. You should... you could never understand. Even if I were to get up from this couch, walk over to you right now, and punch you in the forehead with brass knuckles with a con condensed edition of my life story on them, leaving my autobiography imprinted on in your face, you would not understand. For twelve years, Shizune did not even talk to me, even though I hired multiple tutors and interpreters of all sorts for her to try and get her to become normal. It isn't as simple as you think it is. If she does not want to bother with me, then fine. I assume that is normal. When was the last time you talked to your parents? It has been a while, and I feel ashamed. More so that he caught uh, me than at how easily I could have dropped my parents a phone call or sent them an email, or even a letter, and haven't. This knowledge only makes me feel more ashamed. Oh, I thought so. And if I wanted to see my parents, I could have. This is different. You aren't that far from her. It's one train right away. Oh, that is enough. No means no. You're very persistent. If only it was about something that mattered, I can see... With what uh, you may have learned from my daughter, aside from that, and how to backtalk people, is that it? The answer is yes, I wasn't a persistent or argumentative type before meeting She's and Misha. After all, prior to meeting them, I just experienced a small death. It's mysterious as to why I refused to join the student council in the first place. Yeah, possibly it was from trying to get away from their nagging so much that I was able to get my energy back. That's a cute idea. Thinking again about why I'm still here, arguing with Jigoro is pointless, yet I think I almost look forward to it, and he is right, I cannot understand him. Even if I did, he wouldn't care. I'm a louse that curls on a whale, wholly insignificant. He has a confidence that I don't have. She's an A does, and it could be that the, that, uh, that the reason I am here now, in an almost shouting match with her father, is because some of that bravery has rubbed off onto me. However, I don't have anything to keep going. Whoops. Ah, still I hate him. I don't know what I can do. A few months ago, I think I would have punched him and let the consequences play out as they may, but now I can't risk it. If I were to, if he were to hit me back, he'd likely kill me, and he has a sword. So in the end, the only thing I can do is look at Jagora in silence, knowing that I have no reply and hate him and f feel completely at a loss. Oddly, he takes it as defiance. <laughs> Fine, then have fun with that. Picking up his sword and using it to pull himself to his feet, he turns and casually saunters out of the room. I want to throw my book after him, but I'm happy to finally be alone, even if I'm not in the mood to read any longer. Our return trip to the school keeps getting delayed in one way or another. She's and Amisha come back so late that there's no, uh, no use even leaving, and we end up staying another day. The morning after, we missed the train by a single minute, and then the next two don't arrive. We missed the fourth train because I wandered off to get a drink in the meantime. She's name wasn't very happy about that. And by the time I finally get back to my room, I feel so tired. Even though I spent most of the ride back sleeping, I can't say it's only because of today. It seems like a, fa a familiar symptom of traveling. It's not the first time it's happened. If no one has beaten me to it, I... Could do a thesis on it, maybe get in a medical journal. Returning from a trip syndrome, not very creative. I fall asleep before I can think of a better name. A loud knock on my door wakes me up only a few hours into my nap. I'm annoyed because I'd just been in the middle of a dream that I can't remember, having been woken up in the middle of it, but I'm sure it was a good one. Briefly wonder who it could be, but it's not like I get many visitors, so I'm sure it's Kenji. I hope he's just rolling out, out the welcome wagon and not gonna hit me up for money again. If that was the case, I'd almost be touched. Not touched enough to fight off the urge to roll over and go back to sleep, though. I'm not gonna knock again? Oh. oh, okay. A few hours after that, I wake up again and immediately spawn an envelope on the floor. Oh, it's this again. Must be something that came in the mail while I was away. That's she's in Amish's department, so I wonder if they dropped it to give, give it to me, or maybe someone f filled in for them in their absence and told Kenji to pass along. Yep, here we go. When I pick it up, the remnants of sleepiness in me instantly vanish. Even if the name of the sender wasn't on it, I would have known him by looking at the envelope itself, realizing why it looked so familiar by recognizing the delicate handwriting addressing it. If me would knock out first, I can't believe it, but bleh, believe it, but it wouldn't be too hard for her to track me down if she wanted to. Of course, I not that she would want to. She was maybe my girlfriend for all of five seconds. After that, we barely spoke to each other. It'd be too easy to put this letter away somewhere and forget about it. A part of me wants to do that, or throw it away on red. Why would I want to do these things? I don't know. It would be easy, easy to do them, easier than to read it. Alright, well, I'm just going to skip through this once the actual reading part starts. Slide the envelope open with the tip of a pen. I'm surprised by the length of the letter that spills out. And here we are. Is there more? Yes, there is. Okay. <clears throat> Snail mail. 
I just my email or phone number wouldn't have been so much more work. She had one of them. This is only a goodbye. Examining out, becoming aware that I had been reading with bated breath. Now who's being distant? He will knock out, but maybe it's really for the best. I'd pick up a pen and write this letter to me. It can only be because she had felt guilty about how things ended. Blah, 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 blah. Nothing important. Just want to thank her. I don't think she will reply. Okay, thank you. There's a knock at my door, then it opens anyway about a millisecond later. I forgot to lock it, stupidly. Now, sup, man, why is your door open? I run to the door faster than is probably medically safe for me to do so I can prevent Kenji from seeing the mountains of pills just a couple of feet away from him, blocked from his sight only by the door. And there's a letter I'm holding if he asks it, but I don't think I could make up anything convincing. Just say, oh, a letter from my parents. About two feet away from him, I realize that his vision is so bad that it probably never that it was probably never an issue. He didn't even see me about to practically tackle him back through the door frame. Hey, what the hell, man? What are you talking about? Your room has billions of locks on it, yet you just barge right through other people's doors. You didn't even wait a second after knocking before you tried the door. It was like simultaneous. You were already opening the door while you were knocking on it. See, that's exactly why I have all those locks. It's a cold and uncaring world out there, a gatecrasher's world. Now you also understand. I just taught you a valuable lesson, dude. Knowledge is power. Why are you yelling at me? I'm a hero. Look at you, you didn't even lock your door. The average woman could have killed you a billion times already, then replaced you with a female clone indistinguishable from the original. That almost happened to me. Ignoring the latter part, since it's too confusing, it's funny you should say that. He was unable to stop me from tackling him head on, yet apparently a woman could have killed me a billion times. If this man is a hero, we are all doomed. What's that you got there? Somehow he is able to see the letter in my hand with how I've been waving it around. That is no surprise. I fold it back up quickly, but take care not to whip it behind my back or anything else. That would be too suspicious. Seems like I'm jumpier than I thought about Iwanaka writing to me. Oh, I got a letter. Oh yeah, I put that there. I was sleeping and woke up because I heard explosions. Whoa. Okay. I put on my helmet and then peeked outside to see what was going on, but it was just a student council woman banging on your door. It was the one without pink hair. She was knocking so loudly that it was obvious she was filled with murderous rage, rage at you. And she somehow sensed me behind her, and I tried to escape, but it was too late. She caught me and started pointing at the door. I opened my mouth to tell him that she's deaf, but decided not to for various reasons. I didn't really get it, and she's got more and more, and she got more and more pissed off, like an old man trying to use a touchscreen phone. She was gonna kill me, kill me, and replace me with a woman version of me. But then the sunlight reflected off my glasses and blinded her, saving my life. It was like behold, optic blast. I don't get how someone with glasses can be hurt by glasses. She uses them too. She should be immune to their death rays, but whatever. She gave me this envelope with a name on it and just left. Clearly she was out for blood, so I lied and said you were away. I think you were away, right? I've been trying to ask if you if you wanted to help me with my homework for a week now, but you can't get no answer. Welcome back, man. No, thanks. Yeah, so she gave me this envelope, and it had your name on it. I didn't want to hold on to it, because what if it was a bomb? So I just shoved it under your door when she was gone. I was going to tell you, but you got back before I could. At least it's not a bomb. Oh, gee, thanks. I'm not going to help you out with your math homework, because what if your math homework textbook is a bomb? He looks devastated, and also like he's considering the possibility that it really could be a bum. I guess it is possible, since no one really uses their math book all that much. I throw the letter on the dresser behind me and turn the leaves, swinging the door shut behind me as I do. Collides against the tip of Kenji's shoe and bounces back open, while he hops around for a bit, acting like it hurt way more than it should've. Ah, before I know it, he's already inside my room. I'm powerless to stop him, but before he scoops up the letter, strangely ignoring the towers of pill bottles surrounding it. I don't just read mail that isn't your own. Come on, what is it? A love letter from your girlfriend? Did she include any photos? Sexy photos? Reclining against the dresser and playing, paying no mind to the bottles, he sends all over the floor. By doing so, Kenji quietly leads, reads through Iwanako's letter. The process takes seemingly forever with how close he holds it up to his face and makes it look like he's trying to eat it. Uh, who's Iwanako? My ex-girlfriend? Ex-girlfriend, huh? This is the breakup letter, then I thought you were I thought they were a myth. Uh, I guess it is, but really she's been my ex-girlfriend for a while anyway. I think I'm already over it. Kenji gives a thumbs up, clearly relieved that I'm not going to take this into an awkward direction, although I almost want to since I'm, since I told him not to read it. Yeah, that's a good attitude. It's all right. I had a bad breakup too, but you can't let get you down. I mean, just look at me. Uh. But hey, she wrote you a letter. Maybe she wants to get back together. Huh? It says right here, write her back. You should do it. Is she cute? For a guy who thinks feminists are working to enslave men everywhere, he really is interested in cute girls. I have a girlfriend. Besides, look at the context. She doesn't want me to write back just because that's what it says. That isn't what she means. But that's what she wrote. This rockfish kid chick is to totally still wants you. He even says it right here. I read it. I know what it says. I told you. You have to look at the context. She said I drifted away from her and everything there shows she accepted that. 
I think the reason she wrote me is that just that she wants to, I guess, part amicably. Amicably. But we're done. She doesn't want to get back together or whatever you're thinking. As I think about it more than them, it sounds to me like I'm just trying to make excuses for myself. That's not a good place to be. Positive that she doesn't want me to write, write her back. I can live with that. If I were to write her back and get a less than desirable response or no response, then I would just, just be crushed. Perhaps the fear of that is why I'm just trying to justify my decision. Could be, but I don't want to think about it. The thought is oddly repulsive. Uh, why is it such a big deal to you anyway? Because you should write her right back to her. She wants you to. I I want to see what the response is going to be. Damn, it doesn't even have to be a nice letter. That's cool, too. But you could write an angry letter and call her out. That's my new attack strategy. I'm just going to call women out. You should try it. Even if she wrote me a letter, you have to understand what it, what that means. Writing someone a letter is different now. It's different now. It's not something you just do. Not in this kind of situation. You can pick up your phone and call someone across the world in an instant and talk to them almost like they were there with you. And send them an email. They'll be notified instantly that they got, got it and reply back, just like that. A letter can be a personal thing, but she wanted to keep me at an arm's distance. It's not like I can pop over there and visit her. If I had her number, I could call her. Or if I had her mail, I could email her. If she really wanted to hear back from me, she would have dropped one of those in there. I feel silly for continuously reassuring myself that I'm not phased by Iwanako writing to me when it's so obvious that I am. It could be a gradual thing for her. She might be too shy to call you up. I remember my girlfriend always sent me text messages because she was so shy. It was annoying as hell, man. I didn't really give a shit about phones, so I didn't have the thing. And it turns out I had to pay for every single one. But I don't like phones, so I couldn't even call her back to tell her to cut that out. And I did anyway, though. I called her out. I even used the phone. I was literally the call-out. Well, I guess it was. Even if he's right, it means that Iwanako still wants to keep her distance from me. She's not ready to chat with me comfortably. Why am I some kind of freak? I'm not reassured by her actions anyway in that case. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but I just don't know. Kenji can't think of anything to say to that, and the silence that follows is so awkward and thick that I have to start to count seconds until he makes up a reason to leave and excuse himself. Uh, I miss her. Your ex? Even if she was insane, it was nice being with her. Uh, my back hurts. If she was still around, I could tell her to massage it. I don't know how to use an oven either. I miss baked food. We would go bowling in the hallway sometimes. I miss that, too. I had to bowl all by myself during that last festival. You bowl in the hallway? You're gonna hit someone. Uh, she used to say that all the time. Kenji sighs nostalgically, clearly not appreciating just how badly someone can get hurt by slipping on a bowling pin. Apparently neither did his girlfriend, since she bowled with him. What a strange definition of love, but I guess it's something. Oh, maybe you should write her a letter. If she writes back, you can get married. Married? No, 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 no. Okay, fine, but why not? You clearly like her, even though you hate women. Feminists, not women. Feminists is a difference. They're non-feminist women. Damn, your discrimination is incredible. <laughs> okay. Correlation doesn't equal... Co causation. Even if she is insane and a woman, it doesn't mean she's a feminist insane woman. It's like how the absence of evidence is in the evidence of absence. If it's true, then by the relative property, the presence of evidence doesn't equal the evidence of presence. Actually, I think it is, and I don't think you called the relative property. No, shut up, it's mathematics. Are you saying math is wrong? I think he is wrong. So even Kenji has someone that he likes. I'm tempted to ask why he and his ex broke up, or to dig for more information in general, but I shouldn't. Not only would it be prying, but he did might reverse the question back on, back to me. This question makes me think about Shizune, although the thoughts I'm having are scattered and wispy, just questions. I wonder if I even had the chance to love Iwanako, and this whole situation with her still stings me, a sour note in the back of my mind. I like Shizune much more, yet it feels like I'm chasing her even now. I don't mind the chase, but I want to get close, I want to close that distance between us. Iwanako's letter is responsible, but I've also felt uh, this way for a while. I've come closer, but it's not enough. I want to try again right now. Tell Kenji to get out so I can change, and then head for the student council room. The grounds are mostly deserted today, which is a shame, because it's so nice out. No one answers when I knock. I try to go in anyway, but it's locked. When I pull my hand away from the doorknob, it's covered in dust. Looks like no one's been here since we left. Uh, since I'm already out here in dress, I might as well get something to eat in town. My wallet is back in my room, now. On the way back there, I stumble, stumble across Misha, sitting behind the main building. Her eyes are closed in sleep, and she looks very tranquil. It's always been hard to picture her not constantly bouncing around or hopping on the tips of her toes impatiently. My first instinct is call out to her, ask if she has seen Shizune, or if she wants to go to town with me, but now I've seen her, I don't feel like disturbing her. I leave her alone.
for the few, first few days after I was back, I almost forgot that I was in the student council. I managed to pick pick up here and there. The student council usually gets swamped with works around the end of the break, but it didn't have to be the case. A few times when I managed to catch Shizune or Misha, they were in too much of a hurry for me to get a chance to ask if they needed help. Anytime they weren't, I'd only be able to get a hold of Misha. Shizune would say something about how there was work, but it was so little that involving either Misha or I would only bore us. After a while, the idea of having some free time again started to grow on me, though there were still periods when I felt like I had too much of it. Just when I was getting used to it, though, things changed again. Now I found myself back in the student council room arguing with Shizune about whether tissue boxes make good ballot boxes or not. I'm telling you, they work just fine as long as you get the cube-shaped ones, not the rectangular ones. Misha, can you sign that to her? I'm kind of got my hands full on second thought, forget it. She's busy cutting out ballot slips, so if she were to make one errant movement, she would probably send those scissors flying into someone's head. I drop the box of poster paints I'm carrying into the little table in the student council room, and cough as a wave of dust hits me in the face. It really has been a while. Do you think we should change the size of the ballot slips? Why the sheet, Chan? I already cut out so many of them. Oh, we can make them smaller. It would be more efficient, and we just have to shrink them, to shrink the font. The, the font. More ballots will fix, fit in a single box that way, and we only need half the amount of paper then. Whoops. We can make them smaller. It'll be more efficient. We just have to... The format for voting can be changed. It could be more like a real election. Then we might be able to get away with buying less boxes. With the money left over, we can get a pizza. Or maybe Chinese or a cake or three bowls of the new ramen bowl I want to try. She's an excitedly rubs a finger along the frame of her glasses as she ponders more ways to uh, cut even a half yen of, uh, of spending off our budget. Since uh, I think she's the only one who even knows what her budget is, I'm scared to ask just how tiny it is for her to have to do this. What about all the ballot slips Misha's already cut out? Don't worry, don't worry. I can make them into memo pads and sell them in the school store. She chan they don't look very cute, though. She's and they seems to disagree. Now they're arguing what it looks like it consists of nothing more than signing yes they do and no they don't at each other until they're so tired of it they're just taking turns pointing at each other commandingly. It's strange, partially because it looks kind of ridiculous, but also because I've never seen them disagree. Then again, both of them have looked very stressed these past few days. Shizune has been increasingly absorbed in the idea of student council elections, though they're months away. Imagine this is how politicians act when they realize that regime change is imminent and their era is over. I'm having trouble taking the student council matters seriously at all, even now, as I practice my calligraphy on signs that won't go up for weeks. I can understand what Shizune does. After all, she has been student council president for three years. According to her dad, she has wanted the job for even longer. I guess three years is too short a career for her to uh, leave feeling satisfied. Did the last student council go through this much trouble to make it a smooth transition for you? She's name makes a chagrin face that tells me they weren't very helpful at all. And I guess you're doing all this as a good example then. That only comes into play if, if they learn anything from it. He chan, if they don't, I'll be hyper mad. If they turn out to be the flaky type, I'll definitely be hard on them. Doesn't sound very threatening when Misha's saying it. Uh, so you've already met them. Ah, uh, he chan there are no candidates yet. But none. Not even for student council president. That is why I'm trying to dump, uh, drum up interest in the, for the position. What do you think? And she probably holds up a poster she's been working on herself. It looks very military. Uh, you, you might be taking this a little too seriously then. She's in a frowns and plays with her glasses, offended. Is that weird? Yeah. She looks oddly happy that I'm disagreeing with her, and I think that if she weren't genuinely focused on what she was doing, she would try to argue with me just because it would be interesting to her. What's weird about it? Looks like she'll do that after all, but then she's Shizune waves her hand dismissively like she is trying to catch the words in the air and delete them. Instead, she catapults into insulting her future successors. The one thing that's weird is that in my old school, the elections would happen in about s six months since, you know, we're graduating in March. It's pretty weird to d think about them so early. Yeah, it's a little different here. He chan I'll be discouraged if we don't have any replacements uh, when I have to go, she chan says. But it isn't like the school will stop running without a student council. It'll be harder for them to hand out forms, though. Hee <laughs> hee. She's an ace in laughing, however. Misha's joke causes her to flinch as if she were stung. The Misha didn't mean for it to come out that way. Her quip had a callous cruelty to it in the end. I'm trying to get more people to run, but everyone is so lazy they think they can take it easy just because there are no deadlines, yet slackers not taking the early game advantage. Still six months away, if they aren't making their move now, they don't deserve a vote. Do they, do they really think it's such an easy job that they can do everything at the last minute and just coast into their role? Insulting, really, really. They're going to be eaten alive once they have to sit at this tiny desk and see just how much work they have to do. 
If this were a real election, they'd be in deep trouble. I was reading about Japanese campaigning laws the other days, only the bad ones for some reason. For some reason. For a second, Shizune was talking like her father there, and it was coming out of Misha's mouth. Creepy. Ah, oh, well, first off, Shadow Shogun, you can't really make that call. They'll be elected. Second, it's just a school election. It's not like running for student council or the diet. Or the, the diet or the dia. I don't know what that is. I don't think Japanese campaigning laws apply. Jared, although I don't want to say it, I'm nervous that Shizune is so enthusiastic about this talking of elections and votes. According to her dad, she wasn't even elected herself. Come to think of it, I can't remember Shizune ever saying she was elected either. Then, did she get this position by being recruited into the student council and having it fall apart until she was the only one left? Somehow, I had never considered it. I don't know what to think about that, but it wouldn't surprise me. We're only three people strong now. The circumstances behind her becoming the student council president were that sad. I wonder if there were, will be a vote at all. and Interest could just be that low or non-existent, really. Then all her energy would be going towards nothing. I slap an exclamation mark at the end of the poster I'm working on. It's a little plain, so I think adding one is okay. Actually, it still might be a little too plain. I make the mark twice as large. Uh, still, I say you need to slow down. This stuff isn't going to be relevant for months. Maybe you're working a little too hard on it, and that's what I think. You're worrying too much. I don't know how this, to sign the word relevant. I try and only end up flicking a long line of paint where I didn't intend to. There's no way I can fix that. Uh, Misha, can you ask her that? She's then giggle silently, clenching her teeth so that no sound actually comes out. Because there's a lot to worry about. Like what? Like, usually the boxes end up looking very pretty, so people take them. Have have to plan for that. We should make them funny looking this time, so no one will take them. How about that, Chi-chan? Oh, we can draw some weird faces on them, or I can put a little picture of Shizune on each one saying stealing is wrong. No, it's not funny. It's not the only problem, either. There's a voter turnout, of course. And the worst case scenario would be not having any candidates. Although it seems she meant it jokingly, from the same way she smiles as she signs it, that isn't how it comes out. Even Misha understands the possibility is very real, although she tries to salvage the move by punctuating Shizune's statement with a laugh, it doesn't work. What is wrong with both of you? I was just making a joke. There actually is some interest this year. If there wasn't, why, why uh, would I be doing all this work? I'm not stupid. When the elections are over, I'll buy everyone dinner. I'm already planning it. Even the new student council? No, they can buy their own celebration dinner. It'll only be for the current student council. I'll be happy once I'm uh, through having to do these thankless jobs all the time. A dinner just for us? Yay, it's a little party, she's had. Though her cheerfulness is obviously forced, I say, say nothing. For the rest of the period, which unfortunately isn't very long, we work in silence. After classes, I find the student council room locked. It's strange, because she's and was so busy earlier that I would expect her to continue working after school. It would be what she would normally do. Maybe she'll listen to my suggestion and decide to take a break. I'm hoping it's that simple. Feeling a little uneasy, I took a brief stroll around the school. It's only half uh, its only half conscious. I can't remember when I started moving my feet, but I've already covered enough of the campus that I'm starting to feel tired. Not that it means anything now. Just a short stroll around the school grounds, and I'm already winded. Really pathetic. Before I know it, I'm back in front of the student council office. There's someone else, too, this time. Hi, Hee Chan. Miss Locked. Seeing a can of lemonade in her hand, I reflexively start looking for a vending machine nearby. I'm so thirsty. I know that Hee Chan. She chan is somewhere else, I guess. Weird. Uh, we aren't stuck together, Hee Chan. Misha takes a long drink from her lemonade, eventually just tipping it over and pouring the rest into her mouth. I feel like I'm being mocked. Do you want me, Hee Chan? No, it's okay, I can take someone else's drink. I can't take someone else's drink, it's rude. Besides, you're making fun of me, aren't you? I just saw you inhale all that. I have another one in my bag. I was prepared. See, see? I'm just like Shijan. Well, she's a little too prepared. It's good some of that is rubbing off on you anyway. After, what, two years? Haha. <laughs> well, she stares at me as I drink it is a little disconcerting, but I'm too grateful to care much about it. You and she's and they always end up treating me to something. It's starting to embarrass me. Really, Hee-chan, buy me lunch sometime then, okay? Then we'll be even. And that's funny you said, should say that. I was going to ask you if you wanted to eat in town. Yeah, yeah, I'm really hungry today. He chant thanks. Yesterday, I was going to ask her yesterday, and she cuts me off before I can finish a sentence, and I can't find an opening to correct her as she dashes enthusiastic around me, laughing her arms flapping excitedly at her sides. I already have my wallet with me, so I start walking towards town with Misha trailing behind me, playing idly with her hands and loudly one wondering to herself where we should go eat. At least I think so, she could be asking me. Do you have anywhere specific you want to go? I want to go to the tea house. They have a really big parfait there. I saw you eat a parfait, parfait there last time. It looked really big. No, no, this one is really, really big. It's also really expensive. Really, really expensive? <laughs> a little. 
Ah, well, you and she, she's and they pay for my food a bunch of times, so it's fine. Hey, Chen, I don't think I ever did that. Are you sure it wasn't just she, Chen? Are you really arguing against, against the free meal? Free meal? Don't worry about it. And we go to the Shanghai and are seated by a waitress who's surprisingly not Yuko. Darn. Misha's very eagle, eagle, eager to eat that parfait because she shouts her order as soon as she walks through the door. When it arrives, I can see that it's both a very big and very expensive looking. Aren't you going to order anything? Hey, Chen, if you're hungry, we can share. Nah, I don't like parfaits. I don't like prawlin. I don't know what that is. You can pick it out. You can't just pick out prawlin. Don't be silly. Even if I could, Misha's mash mashing her face, her, her food together to the point where it is no longer possible. It also looks kind of gross. I wonder if that many flavors can even blend together well. Can she really taste anything in that goop? She's acting like it's delicious anyway. Mmm, parfaits are the best. I have sensitive teeth, so ice cream is no-no. Cake is too soft, though, and if there's too much icing, I get bored. Parfait is interesting. I don't know what a parfait is. How many cafes have parfaits there? I think ten. I've tried them all. I like this one the best. It has a little flan. A, a what? You sound like you're some kind of dessert expert. Not just dessert. I eat all kinds of delicious things. Someday I'll have enough money to buy two kilogram Matsusaka beef steak. That's like over a hundred thousand yen. I guess this is kind of a decadent food. Is I guess this kind of decadent, decadent food is kind of your hobby then. A hobby isn't something that should take months to learn about. <clears throat> isn't something that should take a lot of months to learn about. Someone I've been very rude in retrospect. Also, that has one pricey hobby. Well, a lot of hobbies are pricey. I, I guess so. Decadent? Yeah. Misha giggles, raising her hand to her face. Looks like some ice cream accidentally got in her nose. She doesn't notice it. I can't stop. No, I can't stop noticing. I wish she would wipe it off. I'm about to tell her about it, but she suddenly says, "I don't know what that means." Oh, I guess that's a bad word. Anyway, it has implications. Epicurean is better. It means someone who enjoys eating nice food. That's the adjective, though. So Epicure is the word for it. Haha. <laughs> Yichan, you're too wordy. No, oh, sorry. I think that's what Shi Chan likes about you. Because I'm wordy, I need to buy some thesauruses then. Haha, <laughs> not like that, He Chan. I decide to order some coffee yeah, after all, but it takes a while to get the waitress to notice, and I actually think getting my coffee will take about as long. Tea shop is filling up, no surprise, we've already been here for almost an hour while she was chipping at the dessert. I ordered my coffee to go, and Misha orders one as well, so it seems like we're going to be here longer than I thought. I really wish it was that easy, it's hard to talk to her lately. Shi Chan's been busy because of the elections. I know we can't have fun all the time, it's just that there's a lot I want to say to her, I, th I think. I always screw up when the time comes, though. I don't even have the time now because of the elections. But not for a while, though. He Chan, do you think that Shi Chan is avoiding you? Misha sounds angry, that's to be expected, but I don't feel that way at all. No. Is that so? The dreamy way in which she says it makes me think that Misha is disappointed with my answer. In that case, it would be how she feels. I'm uneasy asking such a question, but I trust Misha would, Misha would answer it honestly, otherwise I wouldn't even dream of it. Do you? No, of course not, He Chan, but it's frustrating sometimes. Shi Chan has so much energy and is always trying to make people feel as excited about things as she is. But it's like Shi Chan doesn't know how to handle things when everyone gets really hyped up, or I think that's when she wants to make sure nothing goes wrong. When I want to help out, Shi Chan always pushes me away. It's frustrating. I'm just overthinking it, probably, right? She takes a big gulp from her cup of coffee and then sticks her tongue out. Ow, oh, hot, 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 I thought it would have cooled down by now. Has it really been that long? Check my watch, it hasn't been very long at all, but looking outside, the sun is already starting to set. No, not really. I got dark out pretty quick today, though, so I could understand why you might think that. In my words, Misha looks outside and yawns almost immediately. She looks sleepy, that's funny, because... Are you sleepy? You were wide awake like two seconds ago. I feel tired when it gets dark, Yi-chan. Just like that. Are you a bird? Hey, hey, hey. Pick up my own coffee and have a sip. It's not very hot at all, but very tasty. I'm down as quick as possible, because now I want to get back to my dorm room as well. Misha tries to emulate me, but it's still too hot for her. While I wait for her to finish, I start to wonder what she meant back then about she's now liking something about me. Suddenly I'm very curious, but dragging that back up now seems feels like an unnecessary action. I try to weigh the option again, but, it, but I'm interrupted by Misha slamming her empty cardboard cup down on the table with a loud pop. Done. She lets out a short laugh, seemingly very pleased with herself, kind of like a toddler. I wonder if she had that drill-shaped haircut when she was little, too, or was it something more like her current look? That would make more sense. I guess we should head back, then. I can't see the waitress trying not to fall asleep while I pay for the sundae, okay? Not a sundae, it's a parfait, he chan Hehehe. <laughs> you have ice cream on your nose. <laughs> we haven't even had one choice this whole route. 
Like, this is a visual novel at its truest. Alright, well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.